There are two species of godwit regularly encountered in Britain and Ireland, the black-tailed and the bar-tailed godwit. Both are medium-large waders that can be found on coastal and inland habitats. They are larger than a ruff but smaller than a curlew, and are grey above and pale below with long dark legs and a long bill, and both display beautiful brick-red breeding plumage. So how can we tell them apart? Distant godwits can be difficult to separate, but a combination of structure and plumage should hopefully enable most individuals to be confidently identified. Black-tailed godwit is the most frequent of the two species, with some 43,000 birds wintering. Another 12,000 pass through in autumn and spring. The birds are also found in very small numbers year-round, and are small population breeds, with just 100 pairs. Numbers in the country are highest in July to October, as individuals from the increasing Icelandic population pass through or arrive for winter. Adult non-breeding black-tailed godwits should be easy to identify, being a very plain grey above and on the wings, and with long black legs and a long straight beak, which is pinkish at the base. The birds are long-legged, long-necked and long-billed. They look very elegant and elongated. In all plumages, the most obvious features are the back and the wings. If the wings are raised, as they often are, when the bird stretches or preens or prepares to fly, there is a striking black tail, square white rump contrasting with a coloured back, and black wings with a huge, bold white wing stripe. In fact, if you are stumped by the identification of godwit, often the best plan is to watch until such times as the wing pattern is revealed. If the bird remains resolutely earthbound and close-winged, then structure and other plumage clues can come into play. The most useful of these is possibly the structure. There are somewhat fewer Bartel godwits in the UK and Ireland, although they too are at their most frequent in late summer and early autumn and can be found right around the country. The Bartel godwit is generally smaller and slighter, with some important difference. In flight, black-tailed godwits are purposeful and elegant, and their long legs extend well beyond the tail, mirroring their long beaks. The wing pattern can usually be seen. Bar-tailed godwit is generally smaller and slighter, with some important differences. The bill has a distinct upturn, which can be really obvious. The neck is shorter, and the tibia, the part of the leg from the body to the apparent knee bend, is also shorter, leading to a much stouter, less lanky impression, almost like a little curlew, with a slightly upcurved beak. If the wings are raised, you should see the fine, even bars on the upper side of the tail, but the white rump extends up over the back, forming a V under the wings, and the wings are dark brown, missing those white markings of black-tailed godwit. Winter adult bar-tailed godwits have a more patterned grey-brown upper parts than black-tailed godwit, with streaking over the chest, neck and head particularly. Juveniles of both species are more similar in plumage, being white below, buffish on the chest, and especially the neck and dark-centred wing feathers. Again, structure is the first key difference, although be aware that the upturned beak of the bar-tailed godwit may be less pronounced, as young waders tend to have very slightly shorter beaks. In flight, Bartel godwits also give a different impression, the feet only just jutting beyond the tail, giving the impression that they are very much in front of the wing. The overall colouring very much suggests a curlew, and if the beak can't be seen, there could be a danger of mistaking Bartel godwit for that species, or the more similarly sized wimbrel. The neck, chest and flanks of young Bartel godwits have fine streaking, and the tertial feathers have neat buff scalloping all the way up the feathers. Juvenile black-tailed godwits lack the streaking, and the tertials only have scalloping at the tips. There is variation in colour of young black-tailed godwits due to the change with age and the race. The Icelandic birds tend to be more colourful than locally bred individuals. In late spring, it is possible to encounter either of these species in breeding plumage. In all cases, the head and neck start to show brick red feathers. Some females show a few more of these feathers, males even more so. Bartel godwits are unmarked below, and certainly in males, the brick red can extend right back, giving a stunning clean red chest and belly. Females will have an unmarked white belly, with perhaps some chestnut scattered feathers. Black-tail godwits, on the other hand, usually have black scalloping on the belly mixed with white and occasionally orange feathers, 
although again be aware of first year local birds which may fail to show the belly and breast scalloping but they should still be identifiable by their plain grey wing feathers, long straight beak and long legs. Behaviour is also a helping clue to add into the mix. There is considerable overlap, but whilst both species can be found at the coast, black-tailed godwit is more often found on mud flats and pools and even fresh water, whereas birds found on the open shoreline and estuaries are more likely to be bar-tailed godwits. Likewise, although both species can be found inland, black-tailed godwit is by far the most likely species to be encountered away from the coast. To recap then, most individuals should be easy to identify to species using a combination of structure, plumage and habitat. But there will be occasional birds, possibly lone juveniles or birds out of context that may confuse, although a sight of the wings should give an immediate solution.